welcome to my YouTube channel, where every episode I take a physics topic and hopefully explain it in a really simple and understandable way. Now some episodes are just going to be fun physics facts, but most I'm going to try and tie in to the current school curriculum, so when that's the case I'm going to put the key stage in the episode title. Today I'm actually going to cover a really important course. To be honest, I'm surprised I've come this far and not even covered it yet. So this episode is all about friction. Friction is a force that always acts in the opposite direction to movement. It literally does the opposite of what you want to do. So friction is the resistance to the motion of an object. So if you have two objects touching and sliding or trying to slide across each other, then friction will slow down the moving object. And the rougher the surface is, the more friction there will be. Whereas a smoother surface will create less friction. The awesome thing about friction is that it allows things to start and stop. Without friction, we'd just be sliding around life, going nuts, never being able to stop. Imagine walking on ice, like Bambi, that's what it would be like. Friction is what allows like the tyres on your car to grip the road surface. Without this friction, the car tyres wouldn't be able to grip the road surface to move you forward. And they also wouldn't be able to grip the road to help you stop. It's why you have patterns on the soles of your shoes as well. So the more grooves there are in the soles of your trainers, the more grip they'll have because there'll be more friction. And that's why as trainers get older and more used, the sole of the shoe gets more worn into one smooth surface and they lose their grip and it's harder to change direction whilst you're running. All right, so there's all the good things we have about friction. And to be honest, there is quite a lot, but there are some downsides to friction too. Like the fact that it totally wastes energy. So you know when a car has been driving for a length of time, the tyres get really hot? Well, the friction between the moving tyre and the road surface has created heat between them, which is a waste of energy. I don't think I can run fast enough to create that amount of heat in my trainers, but it does happen on bikes as well, so bike tyres heat up whilst you're cycling as a result of friction. Friction also limits our top speed, so because it provides a resistance to our movement, we'll never be able to use our full amount of energy for speed, because friction wastes some of it. So we'll never know our full potential, because friction will always be pulling us back. Just imagine what Usain Bolt could achieve without friction. But then again, he'd never be able to stop. So when you get to high enough speeds, another type of friction comes into play, and this is called air resistance. You can have both air resistance and water resistance, and both of these forms of friction can be called drag. Drag pushes against objects in the opposite direction to which they're moving, either through air or water. If you remember, in my How Planes Fly video, I explained that air has a mass and therefore a weight. Drag occurs because both air and water have to be pushed out the way by an object in order to move through them. And because this resistance caused by air or water is a force that slows moving objects down, we class it as a frictional force. So if you want to move faster through air or water, you have to become streamlined in order to minimise drag. This is why cyclists bend over while cycling to reduce drag. And why swimmers may shave their bodies, because the hairs will create more water resistance. Streamlining means creating a shape that will move through air and water easier to reduce drag. So a smaller, smoother car will have less air resistance and be able to travel faster than a big lorry, which has sharp corners and a large surface area because it has to move more air out the way to get through and therefore will have a greater drag. And boats will move quicker through water if they're smoother and are more streamlined. 
Have you ever wondered why when skydivers open up their parachutes, it looks like they fly back up higher into the sky? Well, when they initially jump out of the plane, they have the force of weight acting downwards, which is their mass times gravity. But as they fall and build up speed, the amount of air resistance pushing against them also builds up. That's why their faces look so wobbly, that's drag pushing against them. And then, all of a sudden, when they open up their parachute, there's a much larger surface area trying to travel through the air. So the air resistance increases dramatically and slows the skydiver down. However, if there's another skydiver next to them filming, then opening up the parachute slows them down so much that it looks like they've shot back up, where in reality, they've just slowed down a huge amount. After the parachute has been released, the air resistance becomes equal to the weight and the forces are balanced. This means that the skydiver can now travel the rest of the distance towards Earth at a nice, steady speed. And then, once landed, the weight of the skydiver on the ground produces an equal and opposite upward force, allowing the skydiver to stand safely on the ground, just like the rest of us again. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to learn about other cool physics facts, then please like and subscribe and watch all of my other videos. And if you want to learn about a specific topic, please leave a comment below and I'll try to do a video for you.